Hey everybody, Fishman here, welcome to another video. I had intended today to be the start of the ammonium chloride experiments, but a job came up, a one that required that I design a box filter to fit in a very specific spot, and I thought I would take you guys through some of the steps I go through when I'm designing a filter like this, and also it will show how, you know, a filter doesn't have to be a specific shape and size for it to do a good job. And it'll also give the plants that are in the tank where the ammonium chloride experiments are going to happen a couple more days uh, to show that the carbon really has gotten rid of uh, all the problems that were in that tank. And I'll do an update for that on Sunday. Now this filter has a couple of size restrictions imposed upon it. It has to fit behind a certain item that's in the tank. So it can't be any thicker than about two or two and a quarter inches. Now it does have a little bit more leniency as far as the height goes, uh, but uh, not enough for me to take the usual chunky box filters I make, which are usually about four or five inches uh, by about four or five inches in footprint, uh, and take that and keep that amount of uh, internal volume, and then just like squish it down and have it taller, it would end up being way too tall. So I need to rearrange the internal structure of this filter. I can't have the biomedia and then have on top of it uh, whatever I'm going to use for the filtration system as far as mechanical goes. So I need to take the mechanical aspect of this and move it off to one end. So that means I am going to be uh, drawing water out one end, and it's going to draw water down through uh, the biomedia, and then up through what I'm going to use as the mechanical filter. In this case, I decided to go with an open pore sponge, uh, simply because uh, it's a bit more rigid, and it will allow me a little bit more flexibility when I'm designing the inside of this. Now these two pieces of drilled acrylic are going to form the brackets for the standpipe. Uh, this is the material I'm going to be cutting that out of. Obviously it's going to be a lot shorter than this. But I wanted to demonstrate a couple of features that I was initially intending on putting into it, uh, but actually I only ended up using one of them. Now the bottom piece, as you can see, is a bit of a friction fit, but it is loose enough that I can remove it, but not loose enough that uh, the water will bounce it out. Now the other one is going to be the lid, and as you can see it is considerably more loose, and I was planning initially to have those two pieces of acrylic you see on the right, the thin ones, I was going to use those to make a bracket that the lid was going to slide through, and then the standpipe was going to act as a locking mechanism for it. It was an interesting idea, but as it turns out, it wasn't really necessary because of how this all worked out in the end. but. Uh, you'll see that as, as this progresses. Now, for the next little bit, is just me going to be uh, gluing this together, and I think I might take that chance to remind you guys that today is probably going to be the last day that you're going to be able to get in on the draw if you're interested. Now, for those of you who haven't heard, I'm doing a big 13K giveaway uh, a draw, and that's going to be for, presented on Sunday. So what I need to do is tomorrow, which is Saturday, uh, go through all the ballots, which is every comment that is in that video, which has now been up for about a week, and uh, collate them all and pick a random uh, number and figure out who the winner is so I can get that all processed so I can present uh, the winner on Sunday. So again, uh, leave a comment if you're interested on that video, uh, not this video, so go to the 13K uh, giveaway and uh, leave a comment, leave as many comments as you want. I will not be answering the comments because uh, there are just way too many of them and it'll just, it takes this way too long. So just uh, leave it so that I know who you are, I'll generate the number, and we'll figure all that out for Sunday. So what I'm doing here is a little bit different than what I normally do uh, when I'm doing a glue up for, well, you know, they're all basically acrylic boxes. This one is fairly narrow. So instead of doing what I normally do, which is to uh, weld the two sides together like this, and then weld them onto the bottom, I'm leaving the bottom off to last because there's going to be an awful lot of finicky pieces going on the inside of this and I have to ensure that I can get to them all. And this will give me one other access point and uh, that way I don't have to worry about like not being able to reach something. So this is going to be one of the baffles, the one that's going to go by the lift stack. And normally when I cut baffles, I don't usually worry at all too much about you know how long they're going to be. Uh, mostly because there's an awful lot of variability for it, and it's just there to direct flow. But in this particular case, it was off, even though I thought I cut it uh, longer than I needed, it was short by about a sixteenth of an inch. 
And because of how I'm designing this filter, it actually mattered because it would have a gap right there where the, this is going to be not the lid, but this is where the lid would fit. And then that means the water would be able to get past uh, the biomedia, and that's that's not good. I want as much water, of course, to go by there as possible. So I had to recut that. It's not a big deal. It's a small piece, but so uh, one of those things that sometimes comes up when you're designing filters like this. But anyway, it turned out good in the end, and uh, as you can see, this is the chamber where like I said the, the lift stack is going to fit. So I'm going to just glue this on here now, and then I'm going to show you what I had initially intended for how the lid was going to fit, and how the lift stack was going to fit as well. I had intended uh, for it to slide through. So here it is fitting in place now, and what I would do to clean this is pull this out, and you can see it's a bit of a fit on the bottom, and then I'd be able to slide the lid out. So the lid is now locked in place. You have to imagine uh, those two thin strips there as the grooves that it's going to fit in. And that, like I said, that was how I originally intended this, but even though I had messed up on the baffle, I had actually cut the sides really well, so this fits together really nicely. Uh, one thing I do need to do, though, because it is a bit of a loose fit for the bottom. Uh, it's not going to be enough that the bubbles will pop it out or anything, but it uh, might be enough that if uh, it gets banged around a little bit, that the lift stack may slide down and therefore restrict how much water can flow past it. So that needs to be uh, a small bracket put on, it's no big deal. So this is the intake. This is where, as you can see, the holes are. That's where the water's gonna come in. And then it's gonna slide up through there and go through the mechanical filtration. <laughs> Once I put it up right, there you go. So it's beginning to come together so you can see now what it's gonna look like. Now, we're actually getting fairly close actually to the end of this too. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put on the other baffle. This is going to make uh, the final chamber for this. And in this particular case, what I did is I cut a piece exactly the width I wanted so that I can make sure that this is nice and parallel. Because it, one thing about when I make these things, if I end up putting this together and one of them is this little slanted, it just bugs me. Even though this entire filter will never be seen, uh, except by me when I clean it. Uh, it was just one of those things I want to take care of. Now because I had changed some of the uh, methods for making this, <laughs> the initial piece I cut uh, is now too long. Again, not a big deal. I'm just going to uh, cut it down to fit. Uh, but again, as you choose, uh, make choices, and a lot of the choices I make now are trying to avoid as much um, cutoffs as possible, or actually offcuts as possible, I uh, ended up changing one of the dimensions a little bit, and that was after I had cut that piece. Uh, again, not a big deal, but it's just one of those things that again crops up as you're making these things. This is going to be one of the two brackets that is going to hold uh, that piece of egg crate in place. And yes, I'm using egg crate this time instead of uh, taking a piece of acrylic and drilling holes in it, uh, simply because I wanted to get this done, and also uh, it, egg crate's great. It's fine. And this one is removable and easy to get at, so if it does crack or something later on, uh, I'll be able to replace it with ease. Now this is one of the reasons why I didn't glue the bottom on. Uh, this is one of those pieces that I mentioned that is uh, difficult to place and get at. Uh, so I'm going to just tack weld it here for a second, and then make sure it fits properly. And if the bottom was already on, this would be just too hard to get at. Uh, so this makes it this uh, this well this one particular step a lot easier. So there you go. That is now in place, and the bottom or the grate here just pops right in and like that. And that's like I said, it's so easy to get at. Egg crate is wonderful this for this this style of thing because again, uh, it is easy to do and easily replaceable if it ever breaks. So here we're getting right down to the wire now. I just need to uh, weld on the last three pieces. And, oh, sorry, one more thing. I need to put this on. This is going to keep uh, the standpipe from uh, end up, like, by either over vigorous cleaning or bumping or whatever, uh, getting pushed down too far into uh, the chamber below, and then, of course, restricting flow. So this is going to keep that uh, as a, just a preventative stopgap. So that's going to go on there. I'm going to weld that on, and I'm going to weld on the bottom, and then this filter is pretty much done. I had thought, again, at this point, that I was going to still have to uh, 
uh, weld on those two guides uh, for the lid, but you'll see in a few minutes here the reason why I didn't do that. So this needs to be glued on, or welded on, sorry, and then the nice thing about this is when I did this, because I was concerned again, of course, about how narrow this was, I cut the bottom, I think about uh, 30 seconds of an inch uh, wider than the actual dimensions it needed to be. And the reason for that is, first off, it's never going to get seen. And secondly, I don't have to reach my hand, or attempt to reach my hand, I should say, down through all that. Uh, so all I have to do is just go around the outside. And it, uh, it's an actually a really good way. And if it is something that you need to have look more finished, uh, you can always uh, just trim off the excess acrylic afterwards. So that allows me to do that, which is... Uh, <laughs> definitely much easier than trying to reach down through this and that is pretty much that uh, this filter is almost done i have a couple more spots of welding to do and then i need to put media in this i want to run this in my fish room for probably about a couple of weeks uh, for a couple of reasons uh, first off i like these filters to be uh, at least partially conditioned when i put them in tanks and the second thing is whenever i design a filter like this even though i've designed so many filters that i'm fairly certain it's going to do just fine I like to test it out for a little while and see what kind of flow I get and, uh, you know, that sort of thing and take it through some of its paces and make sure maintenance is fine. And this is the reason why I didn't have to put those guides on. It is a nice tight fit. I am going to just sand, uh, not the whole thing, but just the leading edge of it uh, because acrylic, when you uh, cut it on a table saw, it does have a fairly crisp corner to it and this just makes it easier to uh, put it in place there you go nice and snug now this is going to fit down here and that little bracket is going to keep it from going down too far now there's one more thing i need to do and it is also a bit of a locking mechanism for this and that is i need to put together the extension ring for this this is going to have a lift stack that's a lot higher than this for the tank it's going to go in and that extension ring is actually going to offer a bit of security for the lid as well. And I'm going to do that all off camera. It's, uh, it's just a simple friction fit in the ring that's going to go over this. And the reason I'm not putting it on uh, right at the moment is uh, my tanks are way shallower than the tank that this is going to go on. And again, it's just, it won't, won't function with that much pipe sticking out of the water. So there's a locking ring or extension ring or whatever you want to call it and like I said just holds that down in place and it just like I said just keeps things in where they need to be so I'm going to fill this all up with uh, media and then we're going to put it in the tank and we're going to see what kind of flow we can get and as always if you like this style of video please like and or subscribe and leave me comments I will be answering comments on this video but not on that one particular one and so that's going to put some air in from the uh, shop air and I saw this and made me come really quite happy because I'm getting a really good flow and this is only with this really short pipe so it is going to actually be 18 inches in length in total uh, when it is set up for the tank that it's going to go in so it'll be kind of cool to see uh, how much flow I'm actually going to get of this so that's uh, something to look forward to so thanks again for watching I'll see you in the next video and bye for now